Thanks for letting us know, Zach, that we're now live streaming on Facebook. So welcome, everyone. My name is Dr. Kate Armstrong. I'm the head of college for London College of Contemporary Arts, and I'm delighted to be here this Saturday morning, nice and sunny. And I'd like to welcome our panel. I'm going to start with our guest uh, panel. I'll start to my right, Fabio Chiquera, fashion guru. Please give us a wave and say hello. <laughs> I have longer hello, everyone. Good morning. Hi. Thank you for being here, and I believe you're beaming live from Italy. I am indeed. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Alison Lowe, MBE, hello, beaming Hi. from South End on Sea, looking very sunny there. Thank you for being here. Alison is our fashion entrepreneur guru, and um, we're delighted you're here. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Charlotte Rutter. We can't see Charlotte. Charlotte's so dedicated that she's actually zooming in via the road on the way down to Cornwall, I believe, and uh, is Director of Programmes at University for the Creative Arts, which is our partner. So hello, Charlotte. I believe she might be saying hello in some, some space in the world. Uh, then I'm going to go around the Zoom to our, um, our home lecturers. I'll start with Sadie Clayton because she's, she straddles both worlds. She is industry practitioner and course manager for BA Fashion Design. Hello Sadie. Hello, hello, welcome. <laughs> and Imad Gunain. You say your surname Imad please. Hello, hello. Thank you, head of school. Welcome, welcome, hello. And hello Graham, everyone. Hello, sorry getting used to the live business. Hello, Graham Wills, head of school, also visual media, creative. Hello, everyone. Hi, welcome, welcome. Sandra, I will not even attempt to say your surname. You can say it for us, please. It's Jukic. Jukic, thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. representing BA Graphic Design, also some illustration. I'll go to my right now and mix it up with genders here. We've got Mark Shaw, course director for Foundation Art Design. Hello. Hello there. And last but not least, we have Mahela Dariesco. Thank you so much, course director for hospitality and management. And floating around at the bottom, uh, Ahmed and Zach, our producers for the day, let's call them that. So thank you everyone for being here. I say everyone, I have no idea if we've got anyone watching us. Maybe Ahmed will let us know. Yes, th thousands of people have zoomed in. So I want to welcome you all. London College of Contemporary Arts has gone through a massive shift in the last few months and we've been busy building relationships with the University for the Creative Arts, which is a Gold Teff Award University, who have kindly accredited a whole new suite of programmes. We have a portfolio rooted in the creative industries with a fashion first approach. We have BA Fashion, Media and Promotion, Fashion Business and Management, and nestled around that we have illustration, graphic design, events, and hospitality and management for the creative industries, amongst others. We have a suite of postgraduate qualification uh, courses as well, uh, global marketing communications, luxury business, fashion and a creative industries MBA. So we're very excited about this new direction and we hope that you have lots of questions for us. Before I move on to the q and I'd like to go around the Zoom room and ask a few questions of my uh, beautiful panel here today. If I can just get my deck up and I can't find it now. Um, I'll start with Alison's comments on how she thinks things have changed during this pandemic and COVID and what has she learned about fashion brands being resilient and what has she noticed that, what have you noticed, sorry, that you've been particularly um, excited by? Um, uh, well, I think there's been so many changes. I mean, I think there were changes in the fashion industry leading up to COVID-19. And what's actually happened over the last few months is it's just souped it up and made it a lot, lot quicker. Um, so main sort of things that are coming out of it, changing consumer, consumer looking for different things when they're talking about brands. So um, there'll still be the consumers that will go and shop on the high street and be looking for those really low bargains but other consumers that are looking for different types of brands, ones that they can um, connect with, engage with. Engagement is one of the really big buzzwords now. So it's all about gaming and TikTok and Instagram live chats, um, as well as looking for brands that protect. So looking at protecting their staff, protecting the environment as well, and protecting their consumers. Um, what we've learned out of COVID-19, I think more than anything, is how we need to change many of the ways we're working. Uh, seasonal collections, trend focused, 
because everything's ended up out of time, wrong place, can't get product in the right way, um, and overproduction of product that's in the wrong place at the wrong time. So in many ways, there are some amazing things that are coming out of COVID-19 because of this desire to do fashion differently. And I think the future is actually really, really exciting. Um, we're talking about the new dawn, about doing things differently. So whether that is manufacturing different types of collections, producing smaller using drop model instead of seasonal, whether it's using your avatar to promote or sell your collection. We've seen two more brands that have released working with avatars this week. So there's some really exciting stuff coming up. Brilliant. Thank you, Alison. Sadie, you've been working with AI, robots, all sorts of crazy things in your art world as you straddle fashion, art and the creative industries. What, what exciting things have you seen and, and what do what sort of knock on effect do you think will have on the economy post COVID? Mm -hmm. uh, so just picking up on Alison's point about, you know, people doing fashion differently. I think that's what that's what's kind of forced creatives to look at communicating their idea in a different way. So through virtual reality, augmented reality, how can you get an idea and communicate it in this digital world. Um, so from an art perspective, you know, being a tutor and, um, you know, for me, research and concept is, you know, the, the, the so, so important, you know, for any project, it's very, very, uh, the, the first thing that you have to, you have to have a real grasp of your concept. If your research isn't strong, you're unable to get a real strong, um, you know, outcome. So for me, being able to really emphasize that point and, allow people to go through these virtual exhibitions online that are happening that's never happened before you know people go physically to exhibitions galleries sculpture parks but to see these are now cropping up online is not only exciting for the viewer but also i think it's inspiring for creative people to think oh how could i communicate my creative products in that way um so I think that's really exciting. And also from an economy perspective, I feel that people are able to kind of um, withdraw on their sample making and do it in a digital form. Yes, it might take longer. Yes, it might you know, take more skills that you need to learn, but actually in the long run, it's way more sustainable and it's way more ethical. Um, so I think, yeah, we're in this really fantastic position. We've all been forced to look at fashion in a different light um, and also being forced to um, emphasize this new way of working. You, if you need if you want to succeed in the industry you've got to think differently you've got to think creatively and this is our time to do so thanks Sadie <clears throat> so building on that Fabio looking at how the world has changed post-covid what do you think will happen in education what trends do you think we'll see how will we adapt and evolve and how will we how will we build that into our teaching and learning I I, I think again this is a fantastic opportunity despite the, the, the of course the, the, the terrible background of COVID but uh, the <clears throat> I see a, a, an alignment between how fashion and luxury brands behave building communities and so on uh, the multi-channel perspective and so on which actually might be very much applicable to the way we are uh, relating to to our students uh, where <clears throat> of course the online uh, uh, delivery of courses it's uh, it's, it's taking uh, uh, relevant, but also a, a way of uh, for our, our, our um, students and audiences to to interact with uh, the institution in a way that uh, it's very much very much similar to the way that they interact with brands, whether it's a social media or it's a, or it's a fashion or luxury brand. And I think this is a, is a great advantage. It is a great advantage because it will. Uh, um, within within the fr uh, the framework of an institution, it will uh, make uh, it will turn uh, education into a more uh, proactive perspective. It's uh, it's uh, we can definitely test the proactivity of our of our students in that respect. So we can see them building on, uh, not necessarily something that it's uh, institutionalized, but it's more fluid. That's that's the way I see it, and I think it's a great opportunity to reinvent how we approach our relationship with uh, with our students. Totally agree. I think we'll see more digital, blended, flexible learning for sure once we're allowed to roam again. So I'm going to turn to Mark now. Mark represents course director for the Foundation in Art and Design. 
Um, what's really exciting about your home arc and what's really exciting about your course and I know that we're inundated with um, applications for this course it's incredibly popular and successful what are the highlights what if anyone's watching thinking about doing a foundation uh, what advice would you give them what what benefits can they get from joining our foundation would you say yes um, sorry uh, the, well the, the primary <laughs> rationale is obviously for students to progress which we do very well um, to higher education um, and obviously we've got the UCA um, courses now so that is the prime it's not the sole rationale but um, the prime rationale is to progress um, in terms of we adopt a very holistic approach as well and so the students it's a very highly practical course so it's about making things doing things and um, because we are one of our unique selling points is that we are a very compact small college so there is a lot of individual attention and that's the one of the primary distinctions from some of the like UAL foundation where if you want anonymity, that's the place to go. But if you want individual attention, LCCA is fantastic because we are so small as well. Um, for example, if students need some specialized advice from, say, for example, a little bit Sadie and uh, Sandra, who are on the BA programs, then they can go and get advice from them as well uh, without having to you know, wait forever. Um, so um, we do offer um, this highly uh, it's it's quite um, intensive obviously the course um there's no time you know there was not a lot of time um so yeah um what are the key features i understand that you have the your huge room and everyone goes in there and it's really creative and you end with the showcase is that correct can you tell us more about that please yeah um well, the whole thing leads towards um, building up towards a final major project and an exhibition at the end of it. Um, the way, as I say, it's a very holistic course. So anything that you're taught on the foundation um, potentially how can be applicable to any art and design subject. Obviously, there is pathways as well in the second term, so which are more specialised. Thank you. And just to announce as well, last week we were validated and approved by UCA for our own um, additional foundation, which will have pathways in art and design and in business. And these are integrated onto all of the undergraduate courses. So if a student wishes to um, join graphic design, illustration or fashion, and they don't quite meet the entry level requirements for level four, they can automatically join our level three if you meet those requirements. And you will automatically, if you pass all of your modules, uh, go straight on to level four. And that's a really exciting addition to our portfolio as well. Lots of opportunities. So Graham, head of school, do you have any advice for our students watching who might be thinking about what degrees they want to do, whether or not they should go into education and, and the backdrop to COVID, um, life has changed for so many people. Um, education has always been transformative. Education has always had great value and a bit like in a recession where everyone buys a lipstick, um, I think that we're going to see higher numbers uptaking um, degrees than ever before because I think that this allows um, students to create this career currency, they're future-proofing their career, and we've seen evidence of students changing their provider, changing their degrees, wanting to stay closer to home. What advice do you have students who are choosing a creative education pathway? Um, thanks, Kate. Uh, I mean, it's a, it is an opportunity, I think, and like you said, and I think for me, you know, I'm always looking for specific characteristics in students. So, it, a good student always asks lots of questions. They're always open-minded. They're always eager to learn and then they're enthusiastic. And I think if you're working hard and you plan well and you get organized, I think you'll do well on any course. I think if you're dealing with industry, which many of these courses have industry components in and uh, engage with industry, I would say, you know, be confident, think carefully before you say no and don't forget, because people in industry don't forget. Okay, <laughs> so there's my words of wisdom. <laughs> Thanks, Graham. Thanks. Imad, head of school business, do you have any advice for those students choosing a pathway in creative business? We've got a whole new suite of courses, as you know, and you're very experienced in this area. Um, what advice would you offer students around what course to choose if they're deliberating over one over another? What key advice could you give them, please? 
Um, I think students need to see the employability part because employability now is a very important uh, part of the curriculum. And if you look at the TEF, and especially that UCA is the TEF gold, and they're very engaged in student career. So st students need to know what exactly they want to do in their future and how each pathway will help them. Either they do business, hospitality, or uh, fashion or even or even um, graphic design, what could help them um, to improve their skills? So they will look at what courses is more suitable and what, um, as a college, what we can do for them as well. Because we have a lot of um, support, career support. We have a lot of um, uh, help with also um, having them as a UCA student, uh, UCA has um, a big network of uh, employers, so they can link up with um, uh, UCA. So again, it's, um, it's all about motivation and dedication and what they want to do in their life. Because at the end of the day, it's you can't you if you want to be a pilot it's easy you just need to learn how to uh, how how to fly that's the only thing it's not something magical it's just dedication i'm loving our bumper stickers this morning on a saturday a very different energy i just want to say to the people that are watching i'm really pleased that our expert panel have come back again because they um attended a virtual our first virtual open day in july so it's fabio charlotte uh allison and sadie and i'm delighted to say they've given me permission to put that panel webinar onto youtube so our lcca uh, youtube channel will have that webinar for you to watch as of next week we'll be posting up on monday or tuesday um, they've they've uh, they've come back to answer your questions. So we've got Ahmed and Zach managing our Facebook Live, and I'm hoping we've got some questions coming in soon. In the interim, I wanted to ask. I want to talk to Charlotte as well, but I, I'm I'm I know she's struggling with the audio, so she's going to be on standby in case we have any UCA degree specific questions. Um, but Fabio and Alison, you both work at various different creative arts institutes very well known. We've got Sotheby's, we've got University of the Arts, London College of Fashion. You're in high demand for your consul consultancy as well. What would you say that um, is particularly important in a student experience? What should he or she be doing beyond their turning up to classes and doing their degree? I'll go to Alison first, shall I? Ladies first. Hi, thank you, Kate. Um, I mean, it's about hey, building your networks. I mean, one of the things that you're, you get at an institution like LCCA is actually this amazing network of these people connected with the industry. So as much as you're doing your course in learning, getting the experience, building your network. Um, I have a phrase that I shove down every student's throat that I've ever had, which is your network is your net worth. You are worth as much as your network. So using the opportunity to network, to learn, uh, just be knowing what's going on in the industry, because, you know, even within, you know, a few months, the industry changes radically. So, you know, looking beyond reading journals, et cetera, just to keep up to date with what's going on, absolutely essential. Brilliant, thanks, Alison, I did value, I like that. Net worth, when your network yeah, is your net worth. Net worth. Yes. Okay, let's get that on a t-shirt. Thanks, Alison. <laughs> Along with TikTok, we haven't mentioned TikTok yet. <laughs> I did. I threw it in really quickly earlier. You. Oh, I missed. I got it. Fabio. I I believe that actually it's uh, starting to uh, for our for our students to see themselves as uh, solution finder. Um, the, the industry is changing quickly. We've been discussing this already quite quite a lot and uh, seeing themselves as a solution finder uh, after all employers are looking for not a, not a bag of knowledge but actually someone who can relate to a specific uh, a specific issue which might be incredibly specific I'm, I'm thinking about luxury brand management where um each brand is it's 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 its, its own uh, world that has, has a very specific issues and so on so uh, finding themselves seeing themselves as solution finder put into work what they learn not simply applying but actually applying it into the real world and finding a solution that is specific for a specific situation uh for me it's it's what is very very important especially as a uh uh, frame of mind in in, in, uh, in approaching this uh, any kind of creative industry 
totally hear what you're saying. And as a college with a new direction, and I'm delighted to have this role, it's really exciting. Part of the future vision and strategy is to build on the partnership we have with, we have with UCA, which is the Gold Tef Award, which we're very excited by. So that kind of conveys to our new students the level of the vocational, educational side of things. But then we are custodians of their experience whilst they're with us and to, um, to offer those opportunities for their future career currency. So we've created a network called the NICE Network, which is networking, creative education or creative enterprise as you wish. So that will act like a funnel for our alumni, our guest speakers. We have opportunities with brand experience agencies, Samsung, Vodafone are looking to engage with younger consumers and we're building on that. So for me um, and for the staff here and the heads of school, it's really important important for us to convey to future applicants that you don't just come here and get a degree you get the added value of being in a, a London campus and to build on what Mark said we're a boutique institute we're small but perfectly formed um, we're naturally compliant with Covid actually because our class sizes are small we'll have a mentoring and mastery um, scheme and what that means is many universities you get personal tutoring and you find that academics are competing to find time to have uh, relationships with their students that offer that sense of belonging so one of the key things that I'm developing Developing for our learning teaching assessment strategy at LCCA is that each member of staff will have up to 11 students under their custody as it were um, and they'll be given a budget to you know have smoothies and coffees and chats and it goes beyond that experience of tutor it, it's mentoring and it's allowing the student to over the three years that they're with us to develop their own mastery of self so more than those soft skills of linkedin and, and cv development which is incredibly important but really getting down to the nitty-gritty of emotional intelligence being reflective and we're developing a really sophisticated learning analytics model which will allow the mentor to have a conversation that's really honest and transparent and direct with the students saying, well, look, we're using a traffic light system because it's just easy to convey to say, look, you're really on target here to get a first or you're, you're falling behind in this module, what's going on? And then having that human intervention as well to be able to speak to those students and nurture them through the process all while building on their own autonomy, hence the word mastery. We're not here to, you know, handhold students through the experience so much that we're doing it for them. My favorite quote with students when they used to come in and say, you know, I want to first, they said, well, you know, that's like paying for your gym membership and expecting me to work out for you. It's incredibly important that um, we're in this together, you know, from our side, from the academic side, we will guarantee students that bespoke relationship. And then we'd expect from them to build on their own career current currency and educational currency as well. So if anyone else wants to build on that, Sadie, do you have anything to add from a fashion BA fashion perspective and what you do to encourage your students? Because obviously it's very competitive in the creative industry, especially in fashion. Um, what, what tips do you have for them to, in terms of their career currency to keep yeah, saying? Absolutely. Um, so what's great about the fashion team is that we all work in the industry. So we've got first-hand experience. We're constantly... Um, you know, engaging with other artists, other collaborations, other clients, and it means that we can give you the first hand, like really relevant, up to date um, knowledge, which is what you, you know, you need that you need to be innovative, you need to be forward thinking. And that's what LCCA encourages with all students, you know, we encourage that you are forward thinking, you are going to be the next best thing, what's the point in churning out what you already see. Um, you know, so from that perspective, we are such a tight small team and we can give you everything and secondly we are based in chancery lane so you're literally a 10 minute walk from the team you know where our location's perfect it means that you you're always encouraged to go and get primary research from all the galleries from all the exhibitions go around to the fabric shops you know it's just a perfect location and you know the fact that we're now partnering with uca as well it's just you've got everything in a nutshell you know in in london you know chancery lane so right opposite the central line what more do you want it's perfect it's fantastic sadie isn't it and i know that we, we we're leveraging that experience i'll come to mahala in a moment talking about hospitality and management not in that more corporate way but you know we're looking at linking it with creative industries with events um think about 
fashion as an event, a catwalk show, etc. That is management, that's hospitality. We're taking that approach to look across disciplines. We're not taking a linear view of any particular discipline. We understand, and one of the questions that's come through, what are the benefits of studying at LCCA compared to others? I really think it's the benefit of that experiential learning that we're offering, the sophisticated learning modalities I've just explained. There's also that ability to work across territories. We're not saying you come in and you just do hospitality management. You're rubbing up shoulders with students who are doing fashion and you're working across those territories. There'll be collaborative opportunities, projects they can work on. We're building an intelligence lab, which offers incubation for student ideas and entrepreneurship. There's funding. Um, it really is a lifelong relationship and we're here to add that value. Um, so Mahela, hospitality and management, what do you think um, is the benefit of students choosing this pathway here at LCCA over anywhere else? Well, hospitality today is very competitive, a very competitive market. So you will need to come with some unique selling points, original unique selling points. Our students uh, have the opportunity and they will have the opportunity to collaborate for their practical activities with graphic design students, with fashion students. Um, it happened not once, but many times that um, they were um, having activities um, combining for their practical activities, for their events planning, for exhibitions. They collaborated beautifully with um, um, other students from creatives, creative arts. It came out, you know, amazing events. Um, so that's the biggest advantage. Moreover, the course it's encouraged and the course the assessment the program of the curriculum is encouraging creativity and innovation and that's something that uh, it's uh, on the job description today for leaders in hospitality um it's not like it was two years ago it's mandatory to have an operational background now now you need to be a little bit more commercially orientated you need to be creative and innovative and to bring that extra thing that uh, you need for the business. So that's what we want to offer in here and that's what we succeed offering here. Thanks, Mahela. And Sandra, I haven't, I haven't picked on you yet. We're thinking about graphic design. You did a fantastic presentation the other day about transformative power, I'm paraphrasing here, but the transformative nature of, of art and design and graphic design. And, and maybe you could speak about that a little bit because we're weaving that into our narrative of our course portfolio as well. It might let, let the viewers get an understanding of the type of experience they would have here with us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, graphic design is one of the areas that is absolutely very transformative and not that much dependent on a wider industry. The reason why I personally enrolled in a visual communication degree was the fact that I didn't have to rely on an industry to, to develop my, I don't know, products or anything like that. I can sit anywhere in the world and, you know, be a graphic designer, which is one of the reasons why I chose that. So even in COVID times, in all honesty, people who are doing digital graphic design didn't suffer much. <laughs> so, you know, it, it is kind of a, you know, to be place uh, area. And uh, my personal goal, goal with when working with students is um, besides kind of learning the fundamentals of graphic design, which is type image layout, is to do as much as possible of their kind of passion projects and topics that they really care about. And uh, that's kind of my, my goal as a lecturer, but also, you know, being free enough to discover new areas and new topics and be free to be vulnerable, because that's when you are allowed, when you're in education, to tap into areas that you might not dare into, go into uh, and discover, you know, a lot about yourself and things you want to do and care about. Brilliant. Thank you, Sandra. And we've, we've actually seen quite a lot of interest in graphic design. We're, we're kind of in this startup mentality. LCCA has been around for a really long time, but this new partnership with the University for the Creative Arts, as I've mentioned, is really brand new. We'll be taking in our first cohort in September. In fact, in October, I've delayed the academic start date, as many of the HEIs have across the UK, to account for COVID. We've also extended our, um, our induction time to ensure that in case when we're inundated with students we don't have too many in the in the um in the building at the same time and i i wondered if anyone watching has he has any questions around the teaching and delivery of um our courses because of covid i'd really like to know what what the mindset of students are, are they worried the students i've spoken to have said they're not worried they're not taking their gap year because they're nervous that they're about traveling or that there's not enough jobs and that they really want to get back into education and back into to their lives 
feeling like they've had a gap year this gap you know year off being at home for this for this year and and later I'd like us to talk about the impact of that on on students mental health and well-being and it's something we take really important you know we value at LCCA uh, again as a new head of college it's a great opportunity to create a new vision and strategy so one of the um uh, pillars of our work is well-being and flourishing so we're trying to use our space really ergonomically so the gallery for example will of course host events talks everything you would expect at a creative in, uh, education institute but in the day we intend to use it for yoga um, spiritual talks and I don't mean religious I mean all-encompassing enhancing with well-being and flourishing at the heart of it I intend to have a meditation room a detox delivery where we don't have our phones everywhere you know and that's really hard to do um, and I wonder if there's appetite for that with students is that something that they find appealing one of the questions came in you know what are the benefits of I can see them in the chat there of studying at LCCA compared to other colleges and I would say apart from what we've already talked about the enriched learning curriculum the London location it's also our serious focus on well-being and flourishing and not just of the students but of the staff she says we're all working on a Saturday morning <laughs> anyone have any comments about that I'd like just to add your hand. So do you. Um, you know, that's such a fair point because, you know, nowadays everybody's riddled with anxiety, especially in the creative industry, you know, that uncertainty of when's your next commission or when's your next project or when's your next collaboration. And just to go back a couple of steps, you mentioned how, you know, at LCCA we are like this collaborative hub. And that is literally what the industry works on, you know, having a brand in the past, being an artist all my projects have been around collaborations um, you know and that you, you need to be resilient for that and you need to be in the right headspace for that so I feel that you know the well-being strand that LCCA offers allows the students to you know to build that resilience and to build that headspace and that confidence in themselves um, you know to have a really successful project both at college and outside um, and secondly, for those of you that are watching that will go on to watch, hopefully go on to watch our panel discussion on YouTube, I mentioned um, this holistic coach called Jay Shetty, um, and he often talks about, um, you know, opportunities and things that go wrong and things that go bad and how we all label things as bad. But if you label something as bad, you're not giving it the chance for it to become good. Um, you know, and, and being somebody that works with copper that's got lots of mental, environmental health and spiritual benefits, I often work around uh, mindfulness, you know, in, in mind and I'm doing my public art pieces. Um, so, you know, if you do come and join, when you come and join the BA fashion course, you know, I will be able to, you know, um, to give you this kind of uh, spiritual mindfulness, you know, kind of uh, teaching it's really important it comes hand in hand you're doing a degree you're doing a fashion degree it's like one of the the most stressful the most expensive degrees like it's not easy a very um, value at LCCA not that expensive at all given the actual enriching experience that you have exactly. that career okay, it's what it's worth. It's an investment <laughs> and the joy of getting access to not only the London campus but also students coming to us graduate as a UCA student. You are a university with a creative arts student, but you get the added benefit of having the LCCA flair and, and the staff you see here today and many more. And I think that's really important. So thanks for flagging that, um, Sadie. And also you mentioned Jay Shetty and he used to be a, a Buddhist monk and he has since leveraged all of that spirituality and ability to meditate and has become one of the most successful digital entrepreneurs of our time. I mean, how many millions on his Instagram account? great individual and I think we uh, from the planetary speaking we're in a really exciting time where we are fusing spirituality and entrepreneurship no longer than ever never the twain shall meet and now more than ever as we live in this digital uh, world and digital economy and we never switch off we have a, a duty of care to our students so uh, I think that's another key benefit of, of being part of this um, LCCA network. Um, Alison, you've been working across lots of different colleges and so on. And uh, have you noticed any anything that's troubled you with students or the, or the concerns very similar to what we're discussing here? Um, I know. I mean, I think it is just being really open to learning in different ways because we are going to have a, a different world in the future. So I think the waiting for things to be normal is is just not going to happen. We have a new normal, a new way of doing things. So I think um, it's just 
uh, making sure that the students feel safe and secure in learning in new ways and being ready to adapt and be flexible. But you're going to need to do that in industry anyway, because it wasn't just universities that closed down and had to do online classes. The world shut down and everybody had to be working online. So I think being really open. And I, I also wanted to pick up one other thing you said about being entrepreneurial. I think one of the biggest things I say to everybody, a bit with my network and net worth, Entrepreneurial spirit is what any employer is looking for. You might not want to be an entrepreneur, you might not want to set up your own business, but you still have to be really entrepreneurial. So open, flexible, ready to work in new directions, ready to take risk, try something different is really important. And as an employer, as well as a teacher, you know, I, I employ numerous staff. I'm looking for people who are entrepreneurial. And I think that's a really important skill to learn as well as they go through. That's really important to highlight, isn't it? And something part of our mentoring scheme and uh, collaborative projects and opportunities across the, the duration of the time that students are with us will allow students to, to, to explore that and be really experimental in a, in a safe space where they don't necessarily have to be graded for that. Um, but certainly, I keep using the phrase, but the career currency, you've got your network, net worth, I've got my career currency. Um, and it really is that lifetime relationship that we're offering students. No more do you just leave and you remember that you know that was your alma mater we are encouraging students to come back through our alumni program and put back pay it forward put it back etc there are opportunities through the business intelligence lab and the incubation that i've mentioned as well allison and um Fabio, you know, you do a lot of consultancy with luxury brands and innovative um, uh, practices. You are involved in startups and scale ups, etc. So that kind of um, network that we're offering students is second to none. And again, to be London centred, but to get the UCA degree qualification when you leave, I think is great. Um, there's a few people asking uh, questions here. I'm going to turn to, to the side here. And, um, some people are talking about where the classes will be taught and uh, will classes be running if uh, we have a second spike with COVID? So um, I've mentioned that we're developing our learning teaching assessment uh, strategy, which every university has, and we've built in a, a second parallel work stream, which, which is dealing with COVID. Now, it's very difficult because we are in the world of unknowns at the moment. We don't know what the new rules will be in September, October. So we're working within the parameters that are compliant with current government um, uh, guidelines. Um, there are discussions around masks, you know, it's very difficult for, for staff to teach with masks on, even with the visors, and even though we're in the business of fashion, you know, we can make these look fantastic, but I mean, seen my hair and Sadie's hair, can you see us wearing a mask, you know, with the, the visor? But um, jokes aside, you know, we take this incredibly seriously. So one of the initiatives we've launched is to have at least two days uh, in campus face to face. And we're taking a blended learning approach. Um, as Alison has mentioned that, you know, the world has changed. The, the businesses have had to be resilient as well, not just students, but everyone, the whole world shut down. And so in terms of academia, even the most reticent academic to go online had, had, had to go online. So we don't have that as a barrier anymore. So our intention is to deliver theoretical um, uh, workshops, et cetera, lectures online, which students can zoom in live. They will be pre-recorded, then they'll be put onto our virtual learning environment, which is Canvas, and they will be ephemeral. And that means that they will disappear at the end of the academic year so that the content is constantly being updated. That allows students to have that physical, physical experience, which is incredibly important. You know, we're in the creative industries. This is a creative education suite of programs. We need to be in there touching and building and playing in a really safe space. So we're, we're working hard to ensure that we are compliant we have two lifts, so one lift will be used for going up, one for down. Our corridors are wide, so we can be compliant with the two metre or one metre distance, whichever we're going with the, with the longest scenario at the moment. Um, as mentioned earlier, our, our class sizes are small, and that's deliberate because we're a boutique institute. So we'll be taking a, a, a digital approach, which is blended and flexible. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, someone here has a question for you, Mark. I'm interested in joining the foundation course. I would like to know if the course will be on site or online due to COVID. And if it will be online, how will the course adapt? Well, I think I, I suppose I've kind of answered that from a broad yeah. perspective. But Mark, you know, from the nitty gritty and those deliverables, are there elements of your course you can deliver online and then some more physical? There's a small amount I'm planning, we are planning to deliver online. So, for example, the um, contextual studies lectures can be done online because that's a, a presentation. Um, 
obviously the majority of the course is practical, it's hands-on. So hopefully, and as you mentioned before, Kate, because we are a boutique institution, very small class sizes anyway, pre-COVID, we had small class sizes. So I'm hoping I'm going to pop in hopefully next week and have a look around and see how we can arrange things so that we can have appropriate social distance for the practical work. So I, as I say, it's a fluid situation, but as it stands at the moment, I'm time to say, um, it, the majority of the course is practical anyway. There is a certain amount that can be done online, which we're planning to do, but that would just be lectures, as um, history, uh, contextual studies lectures, sorry. So um, that's how it stands at the moment. Um, and I've got some plans about maybe even introducing, we have some screens in the, in the gallery, for example, which temporarily could be put out to isolate people as well, so into little cubicles um, and various other things I'm running through my head, how we can actually deliver the course and timetabling options. So hopefully uh, majority will be practical, yeah. hopefully. Thank, thank you, Mark. Fluid situation, obviously, so yeah, okay. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. And I think what we're showcasing here is that it's top of our mind that we're working hard as a team to be resilient to the knowns and the unknowns. And we're very mindful of creating a, an excellent student experience within those parameters. Sadie, as a BA fashion, um, do you perceive and do you foresee any problems? I know that it's been uh, troublesome teaching online, these more creative uh, practices. And Graham, as head of school, I know that you you are representing your staff there. It has, it's been tricky, to say the least, whereas IMAD's um, school has found it slightly easier to go online still there's been an increased workload because of the effort that's very different to to teaching online to, to offline but how have you overcome those and how would you overcome that in the in October Sadie? Well I think from my perspective I'm kind of looking forward to this new way of teaching I think Obviously, a big proportion of it will have to be online, but 100% pattern cutting will have to be done, you know, physically. Um, and we've got quite large fashion studios anyway. And like Mark said, you know, about the timetabling, I can make sure that we've got, you know, the right amount of people in one space. Um, but talking about this new way of teaching that I've just been thinking about loosely, um, mm. you know, we're all on Zoom. So I think it'd be really great to have these collaborative conversations, to have these collaborative debates around fashion and, you know, from the concept design development to realization of garments, but also, um, I'd love the idea of going on more field trips, you know, going mm -hmm. out with students, going to galleries, going to open spaces, looking for primary research, looking at nature. At the Horneman Museum, I've got an artist friend at the moment that's got this sculpture installed and it actually absorbs pollution. You know, what an incredible, like, topic. Like, you know, she is a scientist by trade and now is an artist. Um, but, you know, that could spur so much inspiration and, you know, conversation. So I'd love to maybe build that in my in my uh, kind of teaching curriculum rather than just delivering talking 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 at students on zoom and of course you know i've got uh, presentations about how to design and obviously design cycle and everything um, but overall i'm excited by it and i don't want students to feel frightened by oh we're supposed to sit in front of a computer we're meant to be creative people i hear you i'm also a creative person which is why i'm going to really think about creative ways in which i can deliver you know your degree to you so yeah it'll be exciting i'm not worried good that's brilliant that's great to hear fabio you're representing the luxury business sector you've worked with many luxury brands it's your world it's mm -hmm. chanel and and so on and so forth have you seen any great examples of uh brands moving online or or have you found they've been slightly less resilient than the younger brands etc and then a bit slower to 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 adapt uh, there are a lot of examples, there are a lot of examples, but I think the transformation uh, already started happening before COVID. COVID is uh, pushing the transformation of certain visionary brands towards uh, uh, optimizing the, the uh, technology and, and relationships. So uh, we take great example for some, certain kind of companies that transform themselves from, <clears throat> let's say, transactional uh platforms into community platforms and that's that's some, something that i find particularly interesting it's a constant uh, uh, uh activity is a constant exchange between brands and and clients in that respect so i think that the, the situation is just actually pushing uh brands to 
um, to be more creative, even more creative in terms of uh, 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 relationship solutions. Uh, we can, uh, uh, I don't think we, uh, we might not want to get into the debate where whether the marketing leads over design and so on, but actually that's a great debate to have as well uh, among different uh, students from different courses, because creativity in uh, management courses, uh, it's absolutely necessary these days. It's not, we won't follow. Uh, yeah. a, a linear path in creating a strategy it's not it's that's mm -hmm. not going to happen any longer that's not what the industry is looking for so and it's there's a greater integration between uh, exactly the design uh, moods of clientele and uh, strategic approach to to, the, to creating experiences so that's that's quite interesting as an aspect that so it's uh, it's definitely then at the center as well of uh, of uh, delivering uh, student experiences I think that's absolutely right. And I think you'll start to see that you weaving that narrative into your case studies when you're teaching luxury business, luxury yes. management on the MBAs. I mean, COVID has literally disrupted everything for, for some good as well, actually. You know, as I mentioned before, we yes. started to see people moving online, offline, being more agile. I predict that we'll start to see students wanting to um, have a more flexible learning experience. And LCCA is part of the Global University Systems brand, which has 29 colleges across the globe. Our future desire is to create master's programs, possibly UG as well, that allow students to have that agile experience. They could be in Canada having um, a creative industries experience around film, music, et cetera. Then they come back here and have their business side. And, and this is something that will require a lot of work. Uh, will certainly dovetail really well with hospitality and management because that agility and, and to be able to have that experience of hospitality in different countries and different territories would be second to none. So I really see that as a shift toward um, not just being in the classroom, being able to be in, you know, as, as Sadie said, more field, field trips, more experiential. I know that, Alison, you do a lot of this. I mean, you are uh, MBE, innovator, entrepreneur. I mean, 2000 brands you've helped build a profile. Um, do you see, how do you see this having an impact on teaching? Anything we've not covered yet uh, you'd want to say? No, I mean, I just think it's the same as Sadie. It's about getting out and about learning and learning in different ways um, and being visionary. Because I think, you know, you will learn a lot by looking back, you know, some of the formal structures, but that's actually not the world we're living in now. Mm -hmm. So you, in your learning, you have to balance the looking backwards and looking forward. And often, uh, you know, it does take those experiences outside of the classroom and the open the discussion elements of it that actually inspire and get yeah. some of the nitty gritty. And because obviously everybody learns in a different way. So yeah. some people will learn very well just sitting in front of a computer and they're really, really happy. But lots of other creatives won't be. So I think again, this blended learning actually is really beneficial now because it gives everybody an opportunity to learn in their own way. Mm. Yeah, it really started, didn't it? I remember when the first blog came out, everyone started flexible learning and what's that? Oh, you can download them off the Moodle and uh, WebCT, et cetera. We've completely just blown it up, even pre-COVID, but COVID has presented an opportunity for us and, you know, to really uh, envelop that into the learning experience in a positive way. So I'm, I'm excited by that. We have another question around uh, what PG programs do you have in your portfolio and will they be full-time or part-time? Um, I think that builds nicely on the flexible learning we're all discussing. At the moment, they are all full time. We have the MA in fashion business management, uh, global marketing and communication, the global master of business and management, MA luxury business management and the master of business MBA. But I would urge, although they're quite centered around business, we're, we're always looking through the lens of the creative industry. So there's opportunity for each of those, um, oh, sorry, in the uh, fashion business and management. So it's creative industries through the lens of business and vice versa. So we're not taking a, a very strategic business school approach to these. It's rooted firmly in our creative industries lens, as, as I've mentioned. And um, the uh, uh, work stream, I'm, uh, a project I'm working on at the moment is to get all of our degrees online. So again, speaking to that, 
ability to be flexible. Those of us who've worked in education the last 20 years would have seen the dramatic decline in opportunity for people to do part-time MAs. You can do them at Birkbeck, et cetera, but it's very hard to do that. They're, they're resource heavy. They haven't made much of a profit. So VCs, et cetera, have, have dropped them from their portfolio. So us being creative and, and business-minded, mind, business we see this as an opportunity to address that niche in the market, to be able to get your UCA accredited degree postgraduate online um, so therefore you could be in a career you could be a mature student we you know we're all about lifelong learning you can then upgrade your career currency let's use that again um, by doing your pg provision a long time full-time work or if you have caring duties or children etc so we're really proud of that we're not ready to launch yet it'll be sometime next year so i don't know if the panel have anything to say about that don't all jump at once I think it's. Um, I, I think from uh, yeah, I think from uh, my own experience developing some courses, uh, um, um, there um, SCCA is going towards um, a PG more PG courses as a college, and we try to uh, blend in the creative side with the business and hospitality side. Also, the fact that we are in central London, um, in the middle of all the creative industry, as well as the hospitality, tourism, and the city of London, which is the center of finance as well. So we're trying to find the best of both worlds. And I think this um, melting pot and this metissage will work. We try to make it work in, um, in SCCA, but trying to have this, even for the business courses, have a business course with the flavor, and the appetite of creativity, even in teaching, because we use different type of teaching, like we use the VR, uh, virtual reality, we use a lot of podcasts, and we try to be as innovative uh, in teaching as we can. And also because our partner, again, is a Tev Gold, and mm -hmm. their Tev Gold is also on um, learning and um supporting students we are very student center coming back echoing what you said at the beginning we didn't have issue with covid because we are very small we have very small groups and we are very student focused and we take the students um uh, opinion at very in, at a very high level and we are very engaged with students and we value all their uh, ideas and we took them into consideration even when during the lockdown we ha i think uh, graham can uh, talk about it as well we had a lot of meetings with students and we discussed how we're gonna operate in terms of teaching and how we're gonna have sessions so looking at back to the class uh, Looking back to the uh, the PG courses that we offered, we discussed with students, and I, I remember when I discussed with my BA students the different courses for uh, business, and they were quite happy with the BA. Also, uh, Dr. Kate initiated the MBA as well, because it was a lot of appetite towards the MBA. So we look at the market, we look at the hot courses in the UK, we look at what our students want because they are the main stream and they are the main customers and the main stakeholders. So we embark all this in the creative and the business side of the industry. That's what I want to say. Thanks, Imad. That's amazing. Graham, is there anything else you'd like to add to that? I think, you know, just taking from what Imad's saying, and, um, and as I'm at the new head of college, I've only had experience of the staff during COVID. Actually, I'm one of those people who started a new job uh, on, on COVID. So I've literally only met everyone at this, you know, this, uh, this much of everyone. Um, and I've been delighted by their dedication, their hard work, their commitment to the student experience working above and beyond every single time, whilst also uh, supporting me with the new direction of the college in terms of the new portfolio and validation. So I'm really proud of that and testament to them all being here today on, on a Saturday. Um, so I'd like, and the guest speakers, of course, and I would like to thank everyone for that. So is there anything else you would like to add to that, Graham, about your staff or the learning experience and the dedication you all have to the student experience? Yeah, I mean, you know, COVID, um basically came out of nowhere and uh, you know we had to turn this situation into something positive in very short space of time and uh, you know it's to the credit and dedication and the professionalism of the staff at LCCA that we were able to convert the vast majority of our delivery to to online and um, you know that's not without its issue uh, especially when you've got practical programs 
Um, but uh, I mean, the feedback and Imad was saying that, you know, we, we consulted the students at every stage on this. And, you know, that's the benefit of a small institution that actually it's about communication. And, you know, when you're going through difficult times, people want to feel that they're listened to and that you're taking note of what they say and what they think. And I think that's really important in the way that we deal with the situations. And, you know, if an inst a creative institution can't overcome a global pandemic, who can? And so, <laughs> you know, and that's how I see it. You know, creative industry, creative minds are, are there to solve problems, you know, and that is the whole benefit of a, a combined hybrid program of study where you're in different sectors like hospitality, business, you're a graphic designer, you're a fashion designer, but you see the world through holistic eyes. Mm. And, you know, that's the environment. And, you know, the feedback from students, I think, has been surprising and really positive in terms of how they've embraced online learning, because it, it's a real challenge. You know, we're sitting at home and that has its own disadvantages, but it also has advantages. And, you know, you can relocate, you can be flexible, you can go and do things that and see things in a different way. So I think it's been really positive. I'm really proud of all my team for the way that they've dealt with it. I've talked to other institutions that haven't actually delivered as much online as we have. And actually mm -hmm. the experience the students have had has been a lot more positive and the feedback has been a lot more positive. So, you know, that's the way that we deal with things at LCCA. And I think that is the way that we will look towards the future. And I'm really positive. And, you know, I think it's, a, it's gonna be a great opportunity. I agree. Thank you for those words of wisdom, uh, Graham. That's fantastic. A little bit emotional as well. Like it. Um, yeah, that's I me. <laughs> I think it's true. I think you know. Obviously, the only experience I've had of you all has been offline, and I can't. I can't fault it. And I think that you know, looking through that lens of optimism, that we can then use this to our benefit moving forward, so that we create space for more experiences for our students. And thinking about the types of graduates that we wish to. Um, for, to, to leave our care, you know, and as I said, we've got a strong alumni program. And so like the Hotel California, they'll never leave in a, in a really positive way. If they, once they go out into the, the world of their careers, they can lean on us again. They can come back, still have access to their tutors, have access to our incubation lab and, and so on and so forth, because we're proud of our, our graduates or we will be. And the, the types of attributes that they will possess is something that we feel very seriously about. So, um, We've got a good question here, and um, uh, I will say to the people watching, if you do have any more questions, please get them in now. We'll be wrapping up in the next five minutes or so. Um, we will be doing follow-up emails with you, but if you would like to have any more information about the courses or anything we've discussed today, please do feel free to get in touch with our admissions at lcca.org.uk or another web address that Ahmed uh, or Zach will tell me uh, that we should use, or just uh, find us on the website. All of our courses are on there. We are having a revival of our website next year. We're just getting our nuts and bolts for, uh, foundation sorted out first. Um, and there's a brilliant question that's just come in saying, which courses do you offer through clearing? Well, given that our uh, portfolio has just been accredited by the uh, UCA and more courses coming in all the time, all of our courses at the moment will be available through clearing. We've had a really strong uptake from the internal conversion of our students who were on HNC and HND uh, courses. They're really excited by the programme, so they'll be joining direct entry to level five or level six. So if you find yourself in that position, do know that we offer direct entry for all of our programmes to level five or six, which is year two, year three. Um, and our clearing starts on Thursday, August the 13th. All of the students will be getting their um, A-level grades and the team will be waiting on hand in one of these Zoom rooms, waiting to discuss with you the courses that you'll be filtered through the admissions. He'll check your entry level criteria and then passed on to one of the academic team that you'll see here, because we love to work at weekends, evenings, you know, we're here for you all the time. Yeah, I'll do. Um, because our well-being and flourishing is so strong, we have lots of energy to support you all. Yeah, good nod there, Imad. Um, but we are looking forward to summer break. But before we do, we'll be we'll be handling all those clearing calls. So hopefully that answers your questions. Oh, and Zach, thank you. The email address is info at lcca.org.uk for all prospective student questions. So any more questions coming in, or is there anything anyone would like to say? Any pearls of wisdom? Any last thoughts? Any any anything? Please just wave your hand and uh, jump in. Yes, Imad. 
I think my last word for people is dedication, dedication, dedication and commitment and the power of I am. Just trust yourself. You can achieve whatever you want in life. Just be positive and motivated and life will be beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, man. Oh. I feel emotional. Anyone else? What about my, oh, Mahela, yes, please. And I want to build up on what Ima just said. Uh, if you are motivated but not very confident, don't worry. By the time you finish the course, you'll be very confident and you'll be an amazing individual. Thank you, Mahela. That's really great. Sandra, through the lens of graphic design and no pressure, transformative power of education. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's three years of self-discovery uh, through the lens of graphic design. So Great. Uh, and opportunity to cross pollinate across all these other territories that we're talking about. And I think that's really exciting. Absolutely. Well. We even had internal uh, progression, like internships organized within uh, our wider group. So there are even opportunities within our uh, kind of uh, organization to, you know, get your first work experience. So that's already been going on. So, yeah. Brilliant. Alison, Fabio, any final words? And thank you again for being at the second open day. We're going to be wheeling you into every single open day. I will let you go out and be in the sunshine soon. Just first of all, thank you for inviting me. It's been great. Yeah. Um, I, I think again, with what everybody's been saying, uh, visionary, thinking about the future, being part of an organization that gives you that cross learning, cross sector, um, being able to share ideas and go out. I'm really impressed with what is coming out from LCECA in the future. So I think, you know, just take advantage of this amazing opportunity they're offering. Thank you. Fabian? Um, yes, I want to, uh, well, building on what my fellow panelists have said, it's, uh, it's the idea of an open mind when it comes also to uh, education. So thinking of uh, a lot of questions were like, about classroom physicality and of course that's very important but let's have an open mind because as uh, as almost everyone has said and shared it's uh, the world has changed and the idea of uh, a classroom perhaps it's a uh, it's now a limitation what was a, a, a requirement perhaps a few months ago now it's a, it's a limitation it's a limitation in uh, in um, actually open up your mind and see how everything has changed and how uh, this new approach to education will change your vision in, in terms of being creative and delivering solutions. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for being here. Um, Charlotte, I know you've been listening in avidly and um, uh, those who have missed out on the ex expert panel can, like I said, they'll no, no, put my teeth in. They will be able, you will be able to see that on our YouTube channel as of next week. So I'd like to thank the panel for being here again on a Saturday. Thank you very much. I think like clapping into the ether with no one else there all on mute is there and um and also to the heads of school the course directors Mahela, sandra mark sadie straddling both worlds imad graham uh thank you all for being here and for answering those questions and ahmed and zach for organizing us and producing us properly and if anyone is out there watching us well thank you for being here it's quite unusual territory to to be in this world but we're very grateful for you zooming in on on, on a hot day and like i said if you have any more further questions at all for, for me or the staff please do get in touch and we'll be delighted to to build that relationship with you and um, hopefully welcome you to the doors of LCCA in October so without further ado Zach will you remove us from Facebook live and should we oh Sandra you want to say something you're muted, Sorry, I'm muted. Uh, I think there was one more question uh, regarding kind of graphic design so just briefly there was a person who's in, who did a BA in textile design interested in a graphic design route uh, great. You have the fundamentals of design thinking and we're here to help you build up, uh, you know, your path through a graphic design route. So we don't expect you to be a graphic designer when you enroll a graphic design course. So just briefly. That's for no, thank you, Sandra. That's really important. I missed that question. Yeah. And um, thank you for that. We were offering CPD and I believe it's still on our website, but we've taken the strategic direction to remove the CPD courses. And instead we'll be offering executive education and short courses. And we need some time to sort of work on that area of the business. It will still be CPD rated, uh, but we want to make it bigger and better and more brilliant. So keep an eye out on that. And we'll probably be launching toward the end of the year or early 2021. Um, but yeah, please do reach out to anyone here or uh, you will be scaled to the right academic if you write to info at lcca.org.uk and uh, with, with all your questions and we'll be happy to help. So should we all do a big wave goodbye? Yeah. <laughs>
See you in a moment. <laughs>